الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم إنا نسأل غيلما نافعا وعملا صالحا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وجعله حجة لنا ولا تجعله حجة علينا يا رب العالمين ألا ومشرح لي صدري ويسر لي عمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد First and foremost, we would like to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he is our creator. His bounties towards us are innumerable. We thank him for guiding us to this. We were not going to be able to do anything except uh, through his guidance. So we praise him for everything. For a Muslim, they say, Ajaban li amru al-Muslim. That the amazing is an affair, the affair of a Muslim. Everything to him is uh, good. In terms of adversity, he says, Alhamdulillah. Happiness, he says also, Alhamdulillah. So we say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Our topic of discussion today is a continuation of. Uh, uh, the pillars of uh, the pillars of faith that is the pillars of iman basically uh, we are on the third uh, category of uh, the pillars of iman that the belief in the heavenly books so the belief in the heavenly books as Muslims we are told and uh, informed that uh, one cannot be a Muslim unless he believes in the, all the books that have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messengers. So without of which a person becomes, he comes out of uh, the fold of Islam. So basically, we as Muslims, our source of guidance is the Quran and the Sunnah. So we don't just talk, not unless we refer to the Quran and uh, the Sunnah. So before I uh, embark on talking about this topic, I would like to ask to go through the Quran and see what the Quran says regarding this uh, fact that you know uh, one cannot become a Muslim, not unless I mean, he believes uh, in the heavenly books. Then we we'll go on to tackle, I mean, what it means to believe in the uh, those heavenly books and what are they, and uh, should we be following them, and uh, and so forth. So first of all, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Holy Quran, "Bada awwadu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim." Ya yuhaladina amanu. يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله ورسوله والكتاب الذي نزل على رسوله والكتاب الذي أنزل من قبل ومن يكفر بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر فقد ظل ظلالا بعيدا In this verse it is very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the, the believers that all you who believe all you who believe in Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the book, the Quran, which he has sent down to his messenger, and the scripture which he has sent down to those before him, and whosoever disbelieves in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, then indeed he has strayed far away. So it's uh, clear in this verse that no, we are commanded as Muslims to believe in the. <clears throat> in the heavenly books that were sent uh, before our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's a command that we must believe. So, without of which, uh, we have no choice here. We have to believe in them. If you don't believe in them, which means you are out of the fold of Islam. 
So in another uh, verse again in the Holy Quran, this was uh, Surah An-Nisa, Surah An nisa uh, 136, the one that I read earlier. So the second one would be Al-Baqarah 136 as well. Qulu Say, O Muslims, we believe in Allah and that which has been sent down to us and that which has been sent down to Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, and Al-Asbat. By the way, the Al-Asbat, they are the 12 sons of Yaqub. And that which has been given to Musa and Isa, and that which has been given to prophets, from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and to him we have submitted in Islam. This is another ayah that is very explicit as well in terms of uh, asking us to believe in uh, uh, the revelations that were revealed before uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are actually so many uh, proofs from the Holy Quran in regard to this, uh, this matter. But anyway, let me just uh, uh, mention those two only. So uh, I said we have two sources. The first source, was the, that was the Quran, and that was the proofs from the Holy Quran. Now let's look into the Sunnah. What does the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? So here I'll have to like uh, recap with you the hadith, the famous hadith of Jibreel Alayhi Salam. Uh, that one day Rasulullah was seated uh, with his companions uh, where when a man appeared from nowhere uh, who had no signs of travel was uh, putting on something purely white black beards came and sat before uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he started uh, asking him some questions regarding uh, Deen. So anyway, this person was actually Jibrail, according to, the, to what has been said at the end of the hadith, that, that, that was Jibrail at the end of the hadith. Rasulullah inquired from Umar, because this hadith was narrated by Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, that you know, when we were seated with the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa a man from nowhere came, a man that we did not know, uh, he had no sign of travel that he has maybe traveled from far. You know, in the, de in, the, in the desert, when a person travels from somewhere, he will be disheveled, dirty, and so forth. But now, for him, he was just clean and pure, putting on uh, white uh, uh, clothes, purely white, no dirty, and the beard was black. So he came and sat in front of Rasulullah with respect. Uh, joined his uh, knees uh, with the knees of the Prophet وسلم, and put his hands in the, on the thighs, on his thighs. So uh, he started asking him the question, but in, in short, the question that he asked him uh, were first of all, in one narration that they started, he started asking about Islam. But uh, tell me, Akhbirun an al-Islam, tell me about Islam. Then Rasulullah uh, وسلم, uh, responded after responding, Rasulullah, I mean, the Jibril said, Sadaqta, that, you know, uh, you have said the truth, what you have said is correct. So, Fajabna Lahu, then uh, Umar, in narrating the hadith, he said, we became surprised that, you know, the person is asking a question. Uh, we thought that maybe he doesn't know the answer. So, he's asking at the same time, uh, saying that uh, you, have, you, are, you are correct in your answer. So, uh, the third, second question he asked, he said, Akhbirun an al-Iman, tell me about Iman. So that's when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned, this is where we want now, uh, he mentioned the pillars of Iman, the pillars of Iman. Then the third question that he asked was that, you know, inform me uh, about, uh, uh, about Ihsan. Ihsan, it, it will be uh, translated as perfection or maybe goodness goodness so it's uh, the goodness is to antabud allah ka'annaka tarahu fa in lam takun tarahu fa innahu yaraka that uh, goodness is to to worship allah as if you are seeing him um, but if you cannot do that at least 
you must uh, be aware that uh, uh, Allah sees you, he's seeing you. So uh, then he went on to ask him about the alamatu sa'a, I mean uh, the, 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 the hour. He went on to ask the hour, and the response from Rasulullah Sallallahu said that, Mal mas'ula anha bi'alama min as-sa'il, that no, the person who's uh, being questioned is not knowledgeable than the, the one who's asking. Here, Rasulullah Sallallahu he thought that it's Allah who's asking him. It's Allah who's asking him. So Allah is the only one who knows the, the, the very date of the, uh, of the last day or the day of judgment. So uh, if you look at uh, this, at the end of the hadith, he asked Umar that, you know, Umar, uh, do you know who was asking? So Umar said, no, Allah wa Rasul uh, are the ones that know best, better, best. So he informed him that was Jibreel, that was Jibreel, he had come to teach you your deen. You had come to teach you your deen, your religion. So uh, now the ulama have uh, concluded that no, this hadith is a summary of the whole religion. Now even if you introspect and you think deeply about uh, what was asked about the pillars of Islam, the pillars of uh, um, uh, Iman, then uh, the goodness, then the day of judgment. You, you know, these are the very most important aspects of deen. That, you know, deen is built upon, upon the pillars of Islam, five pillars of Islam. Then it's built upon uh, the uh, six pillars of faith. It's also, you need to be good, to fear Allah. Wherever you are, you have to be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't fear him, you should be aware that, you know, Allah is seeing you. Then uh, the, the, the belief in the last day also is very, very important in that, you know, it makes you aware and uh, be vigilant every now and then that no, uh, any, 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 any other time you may uh, be joining your Lord, you may be uh, leaving this world. So uh, these are the, I mean, uh, fundamental basics of, of, of Islam. So where we want is where, he was asked about uh, uh, Iman, Khabirun and Iman. Then he started telling him that Al Iman and to mina billahi, that Iman is to believe in, in Allah, or Malaikatihi, his angels, or Kutubihi, or Kutubihi, and his, his books, to believe in his books. Then, and to mina billahi, or Malaikati, or Kutubi, or Rusulihi, and the, his, his messengers, and Al Qadr Khairi wa Sharri, fate, bad and good, believe in destiny. So, where we want is where the, the, he said that you should be believing in, in the heavenly books. And so, the heavenly books, what are these? What is Iman here? That the, 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 the Iman in the, in the, we should have belief in the heavenly books, Iman in the Kutub. Iman actually is uh, three, uh, three stages. Iman, you have to believe in your heart. That belief, the belief is the first part of Iman. Then the second part of it is that you have to pronounce it as a commitment. You have to pronounce it as a commitment, and then you have to practice it. So it's three things, belief, then uh, pronouncement, you have to pronounce it, then you have to practice it. So that's, that, that's Iman. So basically, Iman it increases and decreases. It increases with the, uh, the good deeds that a person does. It increases by engaging in uh, uh, acts of worship. Anything that uh, pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is regarded as a, an act of worship. So that would be like uh, performing salah, Adhikr, doing good, talking well, and all those things, all those things that are uh, forms of worship are, uh, they increase Iman. Listening to lectures, learning of the Holy Quran, reciting of the Holy Quran, and so forth. So all those are things that uh, increases Iman. But the things that is uh, are exactly the opposite of, uh, if you disobey Allah, disobeying Allah decreases, of course, Iman laziness and all those things, not performing your salam, not performing your duties, 
those things that I mean they 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 they, they uh, I mean decrease iman your iman. So now the books that we are required to what well, we are asked to believe in, what are they? What are these books? These books in Islam, we believe that these are the books that were that are first, first, first and foremost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been so messy and uh, kind to mankind because uh, he actually created a human being, gave him the brains, and then uh, by the brains, a human be being becomes a distinguished human creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has that uh, free will, he has that free will. So uh, he did not just create him and put him in the world and leave him like that. So actually, he sent prophets. He sent prophets to guide him to what Allah wants. Then a step further, he also revealed some books. Some books become like a guide. For example, we would give an example of some, an employer who would employ employees uh, then after employing them, you just say, okay, say if it is a factory, you just leave them like that and then say, you know, okay, uh, I've employed you. Anyone does what he wants, so that there's no wisdom. There's no wisdom in that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was through his mercy and his wisdom that he created a human being, sent prophets, and then he also uh, sent uh, some revelations that were uh, Every book that was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was a revelation inspired, was inspired whether it came through via Jibrail, uh, the, the angel Jibrail, the one who is uh, the, 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 the custodian of, uh, of revelations, the one who was responsible of uh, inspirations that were sent to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether the, 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 the white, the talk, or the revelations were behind the scenes or were direct via Jibreel alayhi uh, salam. That doesn't matter, but uh, the crux of the matter is that, you know, uh, uh, these are uh, revelations that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have, we believe that Allah spoke, spoke, or maybe should I say, uh, literally spoke. Allah literally spoke. So the way and how that is not on us. The way and how he did it, how he speaks, that's something else. But anyway, he literally, those are literally God's words or Allah's words. The, all the revelations that were, were revealed. So uh, we are told that no, there are so many revelations that were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many, but those that are accounted for us or named for us in the Holy Quran are only five. So we'll start with the Suhuf of Ibrahim. Suhuf Ibrahim or Musa, I mean, in Surah to Sabbi Hisma. Suhuf Ibrahim or Musa, we are told about the Suhuf of uh, the scrolls of Ibrahim, or maybe the papers of Ibrahim, to put it in simply simple English. So the papers of Ibrahim, those are the first. So those so have are considered as a revelation. Those are really, were really and purely Allah's words. And by the way, Allah's words are not created. Those Allah is not, is not created. So the second will be uh, the Zabur of Dawood. Wa ataina Dawood Zabura. In the Quran we are told, Wa ataina Dawood Zabura. We gave Dawood the Zabur, the Psalms. That's uh, the, 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 the second one. The third one, uh, it becomes the, the Torah. Inna anzalna at Torah fiha huda wa nur. He indeed revealed the Torah wherein there is uh, uh, guidance and light. So this was revealed to uh, Prophet Musa or Moses. The, the Torah was revealed to what is known as the Old Testament, what they would term as the Old Testament, 
whether they are right or they are no longer right, we'll come to that one. But anyway, uh, we as Muslims in, uh, in the original form that was revealed to these prophets directly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we believe in them, despite the fact that the later uh, what uh, uh, Tauras and Injils and Zabors were uh, tempered with. So then uh, we have the the Injil of Jesus, of Jesus of Isa, or, or Isa alayhi salam. Wa injila fiha, wa atainahu injila fihi, udawu wa nur. We gave him Isa, referring to Isa, that alayhi salam, that we gave him the uh, the Injil, that is the, the 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 New Testament, the Gospels. We gave him the Gospels, wherein there was uh, guidance and and nur. So uh, these are the, the, the books that were tempted to us. So there is also actually a difference we, we, uh, I mean, within the ulama that also there is Sufi Musa also. In the surah, the ayah that, that, that I read, Sufi Ibrahim or Musa, he's saying the, 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 the scrolls of Ibrahim and, and Musa, Moses, right? But we said earlier on that Moses was given the Torah. So this is like he was given the Torah and the scrolls as well. So some ulamas, they will say, no, the, the, the books that we, we, we mentioned are six, actually six. But anyway, that's the, 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 the actually the consensus is on that the, the books that were revealed were five. So those are the books that were revealed, the Psalms, the Torah, the, Inj the Injil, and uh, of course, I, may, I forgot to mention the Quran. The Quran was the final book that was revealed by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The final book. So, uh, in fact, these other previous books, they were specific. Indifferent to the Quran, they were specific. They were sent to a particular nation for a particular time. That's the difference between them and the Quran. So the Quran came and it became the seal of all the, 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 the revelations. This one was the final revelation. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pledged and vowed to, uh, to preserve it. We'll come to that one. We'll come to that one, inshallah. So the wisdom behind believing in the previous books what is the wisdom behind believing in the previous books? First of all, uh, it denotes the unity of the source, the source where it is coming from. That, okay, we believe that Allah is one. So he is the one who has been responsible of sending messengers, sending revelations. So it denotes the unity of the source and secondly, it also gives evidence on the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because uh, he comes in the Quran and he's talking about the previous nations. He's talking about the Torah. He's talking about the Injil. Yet he never survived that time. He never survived that time. So the fact that he's talking about it, which means he's getting it from the source, the main man who has been like. Uh, revealing and sending these books is the one who told him that no, there were books that were sent uh, that I uh, mean to, 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 to different prophets who were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, some of the books are these, these, these books, the, bo the books that we mentioned. Now it also increases the generality, generality of the message of Islam that uh, this message of Islam is coming as an international message. It's not coming specifically uh, to a certain uh, group of people or certain nation or certain generation of people, but it's coming to the entire world, to the entire mankind that, uh, and it is coming now to dominate. If we read in the Quran that, Musaddiqal Lima, 
kabla that the, 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 the what the Quran comes to confirm what was before in fact it comes as an abrogator of the previous uh, revelations previous books it abrogates all of them that no we are no longer now allowed to work with those ones with the, 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 the previous uh, books what we are supposed to work with is the current one which is the Quran uh, that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it that you know this is the final book and it will leave the test of time and I will preserve it. I will preserve it and we will come to uh, some proofs about that. So it also helps us as Muslims to be able to call non-Muslims to Islam because we will be telling them that we'll see, we are not asked actually by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to believe uh, in the books of the 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 the, 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 the Ahlul Kitab, or I mean the the, the, the non-Muslims or the previous nation, just to do them a favor. No. Actually, it's a command uh, that is, uh, I mean, coming from uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that we should uh, believe in these books. We should believe in the, these books because they are coming from me, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you believe in Allah, you have to believe in all what he has been sending to. That is true that he has been sending these books to this one. But anyway, it was for specific nations, for specific uh, timings. So uh, it helps us to, 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 to actually uh, invite the non-Muslims to Islam. It increases our faith in, in Allah and also it helps us see his mercy and wisdom. He has been very merciful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, uh, to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very, very merciful because in, in the first place, uh, he's doing us a favor. Because uh, sending, sending the, 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 the messengers and then after, afterwards, he sends the revelations, the, 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 the book of guidance. To mankind, that was that's a very, very, very big favor because first of all, uh, it, we are told that everybody Adam you will do Allah Allah fitra that uh, uh, every human being is born a Muslim. Why so? Why and why? It's simply because that everyone before he was created, the spirit was already there. The spirit was already there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before creation of a human being, where all the human beings or Adam and so forth, he had to call all the spirits and gathered all the spirits and asked them, Allah to be Rabbiku, am I not your Lord? Everyone said, yes, you are our Lord. That's why everyone is born a Muslim. So uh, the issue of... Uh, I mean, uh, that the people who will come and change them are the, the environment. If the environment is the one that changes a, a person, it's either the, the parents are the ones that change changes the, the person. But if he's to be left alone, the child maybe will grow up as a, as a Muslim. Because that's, that's, that's his fitra. That's his nature. His nature is, is Islam. So that's why we are saying that it was Allah's mercy and wisdom that, you know, he sent revelations to us. Because that covenant that we gave when we were asked that, am I not your Lord? And we said, yes, you are our Lord. That was supposed to be enough. That was supposed to be enough. Now that he sends prophets and then he sends also revelations, then which means that's uh, his wisdom and uh, favor. Wisdom in the sense that, you know, he did not like leave us just like that. Like a person who like, invented a car. Uh, he will give you a manual how to use the car, right? So the revelation, the books of the heavenly books are like manuals to us, how we should be living our lives, how we should be obeying Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. So these are the wisdom, uh, those are the, uh, uh, the purposes of believing in the, in the heavenly books. Now, how to believe in the heavenly books? First of all, as Muslims, we're supposed to believe that, you know, these heavenly books that are purely the ways of Allah, SWT, as I said earlier, that they are literally the ways of Allah. That's number one belief that we should believe, that they are literally the ways of Allah, SWT. 
Uh, the mentioned books, we have already uh, know, named them. That is uh, the Suhuf Ibrahim, uh, Torah, Injil, Zabur, and the Quran, the final one. So we divulge that now all these ones were specific and unreserved. All these other books besides the Quran were specific to a certain nation, to certain grouping of people in a specific time. Then they were not reserved as well. So that's why they suffered interpolations. They suffered distortions. People had to add and subtract. They had to temper with the, the original uh, scripts. They had to uh, temper with them. So we are actually told that they were temper, the books were tempered with from the Quran. That uh, that uh, woe unto those who write uh, uh, books by their own hands and say these are uh, from Allah. Woe unto them. We, we, we are told in the Quran that you know that uh, they put words out of context. They put words out of context. And they distorted and changed and they blasphemous. Uh, things are there in the in the what uh, in the in the in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in these previous books now. So uh, if you go and study the books they themselves, you will also conclude that really it's true that they were tempered with. They were tempered with uh, because it's not they are not purely Allah's words. They are no longer in their original form because. Uh, for example, if you go to the New Testament, just as one simple example where Paul, Paul says, according to, the, um, to, to what I heard from the eye, those who were eyewitnesses, I saw it best that I write to you my best theophilus. Theophilus is meaning letters. I write to you my best letters according to what I heard. So which means there's no inspiration here. It's no longer inspiration. That's one example to show that no, these were really books, those books were tempered with. But as for the Quran, the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is the final book. Then he vowed to, to preserve it. He vowed to, that is Allah, what Allah says in the whole Quran that you know, uh, surely we have revealed the message and we will surely preserve it. So if you look at it, you find out that you know, anywhere in the world, there are Hufaz. There are people who have memorized the entire Quran. Things that cannot happen with the other books. Even the Pope does not be, uh, memorize the Bible. Impossible. So Allah has made it that the Quran can be memorized so easily. Young children, they memorize the whole Quran. Young children, 12, less than 10 years, a person has completed the memorization of the whole Quran. So uh, that's something also miraculous about the Quran. So let's now uh, look at the comparison. We compare the Quran, comparing between the Quran and the uh, previous books. The first comparison would be the preservation. The ayah that I just read earlier on, that inna nahnu nazarna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun, that verily we have revealed uh, this uh, reminder and uh, this Quran and surely we will surely uh, preserve it. But anyway, as for uh, previous books, previous books they were tempered with, then as I said, they were for a specific time they kept on changing. For example, so Ibrahim or Musa, Musa then uh, the Zabur of uh, uh, the Psalms of uh, David, then uh, Moses, Musa, the Torah of Musa, uh, Musa then came uh, uh, the what? The Injil of uh, Isa alayhi salam, the one who was succeeded later on by the, 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 the Quran and, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, uh, as I said, 
the, 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 the previous books were tempered with in, in the Quran was said min alladhina hadu yuharrifuna al-kalima al-mawadi' that among those who have uh, become Jews there are some who alter the words from their context they alter the words from their context that they change they change according to their whims and desires they tempered with the Bible that you know okay it became a world of uh, like uh, you know uh, what I desire, I take. What I do not desire, I don't take. And then I add and change according to my my own desires. <clears throat> so in the Surah Al Maidah, verse fifteen, we are also told, "Ya ahl al Kitab, kadi jaa akum Rasuluna yubayinu lakum kathiram mimma kuntum takhfuna min al Kitab, wa yafu an kathi an kathir, kadi jaa akum min Allahi nurun wa Kitabum mubin." All people of the uh, of the Scripture that is referring to the Jews and the Christians. Now he has come to you, our messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, explaining to you much of that which you used to hide from the scripture and pass over. Indeed, there has come to you from Allah a light, a light meaning here, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and a plain book, meaning the Quran. So he is clear that they used to hide some of the things they used not to, even up to today, the, 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 the priests, when they are preaching, there are some things uh, that they hide. They don't uh, inform the, 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 the audience. There are some things that they hide. So that a book has come to you, uh, I mean, a messenger has been sent to you to explain to you, uh, to show you, to explain those things that you have been hiding, the ones that you have been, been passing over. So he has come to you uh, the, 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 as a messenger to explain those things, and the Quran has come also to explain those things. So if you look at it ourselves, we are taught actually these previous books by the Quran, such that even if one who studies the Quran very well, he can be very powerful in what? In comparative religion. Very, very powerful, because everything is there in the Quran. So you can just be going referring to what the, from the, I mean the Quran, what the Quran says, you check in their books, you find uh, so many things that uh, they are there. So, in terms of context, now we said we said we talked about we were comparing about uh, between the Quran and the heavenly books. Here we were talking about preservation that you no, know, the Quran was preserved and the uh, the other books were not preserved. But in terms of uh, context. As for the Quran, all of it is the Kalamullah. As for the Quran, all of it are the words of Allah. وَإِنَا أَحْدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَإِنَا أَحْدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَعَجِرُوا حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ And that uh, if any of the idolaters comes to you, O Messenger, and requests your protection, then accept their request so that they can uh, listen to the Quran. Kalamullah meaning to hear Allah is referring to the Quran as the Kalamullah, the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So purely the Quran, the entirety of the Holy Quran is Kalamullah. The entirety of the Holy Quran is Kalamullah. So uh, as for the previous books, we cannot say the same. We cannot say the same that it is all of it is Kalamullah. They've mixed up. It's now they uh, there are still some words that are Allah's words, some that are no longer Allah's words, and majority of it are uh, the, the, the additions that were added by uh, human beings. Therefore, we are obliged to abstain from these books. We are obliged because now they were tempered with. They were distorted. They are no longer in their original form, so the best is to keep away from, from them. As for its contents, whatever matches the Quran, we take it. The, whatever is, matches the Quran in the previous books, that one we can we are allowed to to take it. Or what has been confirmed confirmed by the Quran, that is that the, 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 that's what is whatever is in conformity with the Quran, then that one can be follow, followed. But whatever has been uh, uh, detested or disliked by Islam, by the Quran, then that one also we have to detest it. Whatever the Quran kept quiet about or it's something neutral, then we stop. That's the ruling. So, uh, in terms of uh, 
practicing its teachings. So the Quran, we are asked to follow it through and through. There is no way we can say no, we believe in some and not to believe in some, no. We have to follow it through and through, it's our guide. That's our manual of, of life. That's our manual of life. As for the previous books, working with them is what I had said. Uh, we cannot longer work with them because the coming of the Quran abrogates the previous books. The coming of the Quran abrogates everything, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the previous uh, revelations. So uh, that's basically uh, how we should do handle the previous books. So, virtues of the Quran. The Quran came and abrogated the, 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 the previous revelations, and it also came to dominate. It came to dominate. It dominated in the sense that it became now the new guide that you can no longer work with, with the, what is in the I mean, the previous books, you can no longer work with those ones, except if it is a, a ruling that is carried forward by Islam. A ruling that is carried forward by Islam, then that one, you, you, you have no choice, you have to follow. So, our main guide is the Quran. So, uh, that's why a Muslim is required before doing any act of ibadah or anything that he wants to do, he has to check with Sharia first whether what he is going to do is in conformity with what is in the Quran and the Sunnah. If not, then you have to leave. If you continue to do, you are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Quran actually is the word of Allah. All of it is the word of Allah and with it a person can do the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By reciting the Holy Quran, you are actually uh, doing dhikr or remembrance of uh, uh, it's a form of worship. It is also the criterion. Quran is the criterion, which means it distinguishes between uh, what is right and what is wrong. It gives us the guide. It, it demarcates that, okay, here is the boundary. Here is what is right and here what is here is what is wrong. Here is what pleases Allah SWT. Here is what displeases Allah SWT. He, he explains so many things, the punishment and uh, the reward. Jannah and Jahannam. It is also, it is also an intercessor. We are told that it will come like in the form of a human being actually. Uh, that to a person who used to recite the whole Quran, that do you know me? Do you know me? I'm the one whom you used to recite on the day of judgment, and then it goes on to intercede for him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is a shifa also. It is a shifa, the Quran. So it is, it, it, there are so many benefits of the whole Quran, I cannot like enumerate them all. Uh, I just had to give some, uh, some examples. So, uh, by following the Holy Quran, that is what will raise your status in the, in the hereafter. Following the, uh, the, I mean, by following the, the commands and the rulings of the working with the Holy Quran, it will raise your status in the hereafter. And it is also a light. That's the Quran. Our belief in the word of God and, and Quran. Allah speaks literally, but the way he speaks, as I said, we don't know. But he speaks literally. You understand? So that's why we say these are the words of, of God. That's the, uh, the Quran. So uh, basically, this uh, topic of uh, Iman, just to summarize, the topic of Iman, we as Muslims, we are required uh, to believe in the previous books. Why and why? Simply because Allah said so first, and then for other reasons that, you know, uh, that's in a way 
following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we, we have to believe in the previous books because the source is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The source is one. So if a person does not believe in the previous books, then that one does not qualify to be called a Muslim. If you don't believe in the uh, heavenly books. So the heavenly books, we have been told that, you no, know, we only believe in them, but we don't work with them. What we work with is the Quran. In our constitution is the Quran. Quran and Sunnah, that's all. Nah. So uh, with that, wa sallallahu ala khair khayrqa sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala.